Well, howdy ho, Stampers Deb Valder here. Welcome back to my studio. Today we're going to do another segment on watercoloring. Today we're going to be using markers. So let me just show you a couple of the samples that I'm going to be using today or showing you today. Uh, we're going to be using the boots, which is just a gorgeous set. Uh, we've got a couple of little dies that go along with it, but there is a die that goes along with this set. You can buy it with or without the die. And the Spring Blooms is included with the uh, die along with it. This one right here is also done with the little boots and um, just really pretty watercoloring. Just really, really pretty watercoloring. Very traditional, like I've already shown you, with the ink um, to start out with. Uh, this one right here, all I did was I used just the tulips. I didn't use the boots, and as you can see, it is the same set of tulips with the little the little flower right there. And I did the same thing here. I only used the tulips on here. So um, I just wanted to show you a couple of the, the samples first. I am going to show you uh, the things that you need to do to watercolor. So some of the basic things, um, you're going to need watercolor paint brushes. And I use the one, four, and six. All right. These are my favorites. They are in the shop. And um, like I said, I like the, the one, four, and six. And uh, the next thing that you're going to need is a little paint tray. This is just a, a little uh, a holder for water and to clean your brushes. You can use any little cups that you need, that you have around the house. Um, I just like this because it's um, quick to clean up also. You're going to also need some water. So I just used um, something very similar to this. All the links are below or on my blog. So if you want to go check that out, there is a link for that one also. And um, you're going to need some ink. Now if, for this one we're going to use markers, but if you wanted to use ink like I used here, you're going to need a waterproof um, ink. I use our Teaspoon of Fun one, but any um, waterproof ink will do. So make sure you have that if you're going to do it the traditional way rather than with the markers. And you're also going to need a palette. And today we're def definitely going to be needing um, the palette. In, in the past videos, I haven't used that. But for today's beginner uh, marker one, you're going to definitely need a palette. So we'll keep that off to the side. And you're also going to need some paper. So you want some watercolor paper and make sure you get a good grade. We sell um, some in the shop and it's the kind that I like the best. Um, but you're going to need a good grade watercolor watercolor paper and then um, I like to use um, my kit this is the way we started out and um, we just loved it so much we made up our own little kit and inside the kit you have four markers you have three um, you have three different blocks I'm going to take one out because I'm going to use it you have your little palette it's just a, a miniature one and um, you have a little pencil and your watercolor uh, or your waterproof ink so it's a great way to start I'm going to keep these out because we're going to use those in just a moment you also have in the shop um, add-ons and we are going to be using some of these colors so you can either get the add-on one or the add-on two um, I love these markers and um, you can you can get those in the shop or you can start out with our accessory kit which has the markers the paintbrush some paper and the palette it just doesn't have the little box um, that we also sell all right so um, these two are pretty much alike these don't have the blocks and whatnot so it's whatever you need um, or whatever you have at home all right so I'm trying to make this as easy as, it, as possible for any and all of you. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to show you some of the basics with markers. Uh, let me just grab my scrap sheet of paper and I'm going to grab uh, one of my little bunnies here. All right, so let's grab this one because he's got a lot of nooks and crannies on him and I want to show you some really cute little things. All right, so there are a couple different ways you can do this. If we want to just have a brown little bunny, let's get out our our little kit right here. If you want just a brown little bunny, you're going to take your brown, okay? This is our 969, I believe. And we're just going to ink him up. Now, when you do this, notice what I'm doing. I'm not coloring like this. I'm not scrubbing along. I'm using the side of it. In order to preserve the tip and to save um, your marker for a really long time, you just want to kind of scrub along the side, all right? So now what we're going to do is to just ink it down. Now when I ink it down, I want to make sure that I'm not going to ink too hard. All right? You want good coverage, but not too dark because you don't want the lines to be too dark. All right? Let's add a little bit of water to our palette. I'll add a couple of them because we're going to do a couple different things. All right? And that's why I like to have the little, the little um, dispenser here because I'm always adding water. 
All right, so now we have our little brown bunny. The difference between this and the other type of um, watercoloring that I showed you is, is that we're gonna actually use the lines to manipulate the color. So I'm gonna grab my number four brush and I'm gonna st uh, stick it in the water, pinch off the excess, so I've made my brush nice and flat, and I don't want to scrub along the top, all right? Because if I do that, watch what happens. It all gets kind of nasty on the outside, on the inside, and you'll lose the lines, all right? So let me just show you what I wanna do. Dip it in the water, pinch it off, and then what you're gonna do is to take the side of the line and scrub it in, all right? You see how I'm not losing any of the line? All right, if you've got too much, just pinch it off and clean it up, all right? Now, if you're gonna go underneath his neck, you're gonna take and you're going to grab a little bit more and make it a little bit darker, all right? You see the difference between the two of them, how I left the line there? Let's just make sure you can see that. You see how we lost that? It got messy on the outside, which is okay. This is watercoloring, anything goes, all right? I love doing this little bunny set. I've used it so much. Um, I just love this little set. All right, so now we're just gonna take and do the rest of this right here. And you notice I go from the line to the inside and just scrub it so it's darker on the outside, lighter on the inside, just like we did our other ones. And there you go. You can keep on going with this one. Um, but now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to, um, I'm gonna show you a couple of other different things. Now, if we wanted a vintage bunny, okay, um, if you wanted something to look like, let me just show you, this watercolor can, instead of using brown or gray, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it a vintage gray. And the way you do that is you take your brown first, okay, and scrub it on. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your blue and scrub right over the top of it. You'll notice I did not stamp down in between the blue and the brown. Now watch the difference in color between the two of them. All right, so we're gonna take and we're just gonna stamp it down lightly. We don't want it too dark. Now look at the difference. Brown, and this is like a, a, a very vintage gray. All right, let me just show you the difference when we're, we're coloring it now. I'm gonna take and do the same thing. I'm gonna bring in my lines and we have a gray vintage bunny. You notice I keep pinching off my water because we don't want too much water on this. All right, same with the ears. You're just gonna take and just scrub it in and pull the color out. What you're doing is just softening up the lines. Look at the difference between the two of them. So awesome. Now it does take a little bit of practice, all right? A lot of times at, when you first start out, you might end up having this or like very washed out over here. Look at the difference between the two of them, all right? So let me just show you a couple of samples. Um, in another um, video, I showed you um, this little set right here. Do you see the mountains behind there? How we did it in just the purple, all right, and brought in the color. Do you see how we brought in the color? Just taking the lines, bringing in, just softening everything up and using the, the lines as your palette. For this little guy right here, um, we did the same thing, only we, we used it, um, we used our, mar our, our pencils. No, what did we use? Oh, this one we actually used the um, watercolor pan. So let me just show you some of the things that we've done in previous videos. I've used our watercolor pans and that would be these little guys right here, all right? And um, I love, love using these. And then in um, another video, I showed you how to use the pencils. And if you stay tuned, we're gonna show you how to use all of these together. Meaning the pans, the pencils, the markers, they all go hand in hand and have um, a, a really good purpose for each one of them. So here's just a couple of other things that we've done. Like I said, those are done, I was done with the pans, I believe. Um, this one, I, I do so many of them, I just don't know. These were done with the pans. The pan, oh, these were done with the water. Anyway, I'm just gonna tell you right now that they were all done with something, um, watercoloring. Go back and watch the videos, watch this one, and we're good to go. All right, so that is our startup stuff. 
All right, so I showed you how to do the vintage as, as opposed to just the brown bunny. If you want a darker brown, you would take and um, use the blue and then the brown on top of it, and it gives you a nice, deep, deep brown. So I'm going to leave these little guys right in front of me because we're going to be using them. I'm going to leave my scrap paper close by because a lot of times what I do is I use them for um, practice or um, just kind of to test things along the side all right so i've got my whole little kit right here i've got my little water um, i've got some extra markers from the marker set one and two and i think we're ready to go start with what we're going to do is we're going to do our tulip boots all right so i'm going to take and i'm going to marker this up and i want this to look very vintagey so um, i am going to use remember the order we want to we want to uh, put it in we're going to take and we're going to marker up first with the brown and it doesn't have to be perfect. And the reason I like my little uh, mini Misty for this is because at the very end, if I've lost any of it, like um, t uh, put too much water on it and I lost all the detail on it, all I have to do is go back and re-ink this up in that spot and ink it back down again. I do that a lot in my classes because sometimes people just like to water too much and then um, they lose their picture, but they're just amazed at when they go back. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So that's why it's really, really, really good to use your Misty. All right, again, I'm using the side of the brush, not the tip. I don't want to ruin it. And sometimes if you go, well, not sometimes, if you go in the direction of the uh, image, you're not going to get a lot of mess on the inside of it. All right, let's test that one out and see how it goes. Now, remember, you don't want to stamp too hard, especially when you're when you're in the misty, because you can always go back and redo it. All right, so like right here, I'm going to need to press a little bit more. Right here, we're going to need to press a little bit more. Good, good, good. Right over here. Now, you don't want it too dark. You notice I err on the uh, lighter side, and that's because if you get too much color, um, it's going to overpower your picture. All right. So we're gonna keep this aside. I'm gonna clean this little guy off for now because we're gonna come back to him. All right, there we go. All right, so let's bring back in our boots and start. So, so the first thing when you're doing it with the markers is you, you definitely wanna take and soften up the lines. This is why it makes it very different than any of the other water colorings that we've done. So it's gonna take me a little bit of while, but I wanna show you, I'm just gonna take and I'm gonna pull in the color, pull in the color from the lines. All right, so I'm just softening up the lines. Let's do it down here on the boots. Now you can tell when your brush is too, uh, it doesn't have enough water on it because it kind of drags and mine was dragging right there. All right, so I just want to take and just soften up these lines. All right, you notice I'm not coloring. We're going to bring the color in in just a minute. All right. See how it just kind of pulls out the color? And do you see this is the vintagey look? All right, I'm going to continue and be right back. there we go we've got just about um, all of the lines done we can go back in and do a little bit more when we start coloring all right so I kind of like it just the way it is I just love that little vintage look but um, we're gonna we're gonna put give it some color so that's where your palette comes in so today I think what we're gonna do is um, how about if we do some yellow and we go so what we're going to do is we're going to actually scribble our color onto our palette and that is again using the side of your of your your marker 
and it's that's what's going to give us our color. So I'm going to I'm going to go. This one is the uh, 993. This one is the 026, a little bit darker, and even darker than that is our uh, 925. All right. Again, these are in the add-on kits, but you can do your your colors any any color that you want. All right. So right here, what we're going to do is we're going to do the boots. I think we're going to go for the yellow. So you'll notice that I'm adding a lot of. Let's get this water in in the picture here too. All right. I'm adding a lot of water. And uh, let's see if I can get it. There we go. All right. So now what we're going to do is just add a lot of water, okay? Because we want to start out with um, just a really nice light background. And then we'll add to from there. Now you'll notice I'm not going real close to the edges, and that's because I don't want to pick up too much of the um, the line on the outside. I don't want this to turn like a, a yucky uh, brown color, all right, or a vintage color. And so what I'm doing is just adding a little bit of light, and I'm going to go back in in just a little bit and add some more of the dark. I think I'll do my my heel's a different color, okay? There we go. Now also remember to always have you know, a Kleenex or a paper towel close by. So you can blot any big areas, all right? So that's the base. Now we're gonna start doing it a little bit darker by not adding as much water. All right, so now we're just gonna go into uh, the different parts over here and just adding a little bit more to where there should be a darker spot. Now, where's that? That would be any place where um, something is hanging over the boot, all right? So we're just gonna talk about the boots for a minute. It's gonna be lighter down here because there's nothing hanging over the top. Over here, we have uh, a seam, so it might be a little bit darker at the seams. So we're just gonna go in with our darker color here. And then if you add a little bit too much dark, you can always add a little bit more water. That's the beauty of watercoloring, is you get to erase and manipulate and just make it your own. It, it just is so pretty. Now, because one boot is on top of the other, we're gonna make this part a little bit darker. Okay, you notice I'm still not going all the way over to the side. of the edge. All right, so let's just add a little bit more color here. And watercoloring is not supposed to have defined lines. That's the difference between using your um, between using your uh, um, ink and using your markers to blend it all in. Both are watercoloring, but very different. All right, so let's make this even darker. All right. There we go. See, nothing is nothing is perfect. It's it's just. Uh, let's go back into our kit right here. I'm gonna take the brown that comes out of my basic kit and add a little bit of brown to the heel. And I want it to be darker underneath here because the boot is hanging over just a little bit. I do like to leave a little bit of white. All right, and this is just a little bit too dark for me, so I'm gonna add a little bit of water and lighten it up. See? Oh, that's so pretty. I like it already. Do you see how fast this is, though? People think when you're doing this that it takes a lot of time. The only thing that you have to be really, really careful of is that you don't um, you don't get it too wet while you're doing it because then it can end up being a really a big mess. So from our kit, let's take our blue, all right, and scribble some of the blue on here. I still have... Uh, what I forgot to tell you is when you do this, like the blue over the brown, you have to clean it first. Right here, you can see where it's darker. So I'm gonna go down here where it's nice and clean. And all I'm doing is just kind of rolling it around. All right, now we've got some good good blue. 
All right, so let's pick up our blue and start very, 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 very light. All right. Then we'll go back in and add a little bit more. And do you see how that the, by adding the darker color just a little bit, um, how you're adding the depth to it? It's not just one flat color. Like this looks very flat. And now what we're doing is adding color down to the bottom and wherever there are seams. And I'm not painting it on. I'm just scrubbing it in. All right. And then you'll see you've got to make sure you've got enough water on there. And you do that by putting it on and just pinching it off. go all righty now let's add a little bit more green to some of the stems that I saw that I forgot there we go all righty let's add a little bit more uh, true green here I'm gonna add a little bit of purple to it so it makes it even darker and I'm just gonna go in a couple of different places and add a little bit more green and you see I'm just kind of dabbing it on there watercoloring is very uh, It's very pretty, but it's not uh, detailed. All right, how's that? Let me just add a little bit of green right here to this one. And we're good. Look at that, so pretty. All right, now let's do the background. Now this one sometimes can really throw people. Um, what you wanna do is to just make a really light pool of blue. It almost looks purple, but watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start by adding water to my background. I have a little tiny bit of blue in there. And better to err on the side of caution. Have a, a little blotter there. Okay, let's see, almost done. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is at the very end, we're gonna take and mix the brown and the blue together to give us that vintage gray, lots of water, and I'll just make a little bit of a shadow down here at the bottom. And that is our picture right here. Isn't that beautiful? We'll set it aside to dry, see if it needs a little tweaking anywhere. And that's, whoops, that's all there is to it. Isn't that so pretty? And it was very fast, very easy. Let me just take a, let's see, I'll just take a little bit of, yellow to stick right inside there and we're done okay so we have our little boots right here and um, like I said they're just so easy to do they're a lot of fun let me just bring in the other boots and show you some of the other ones just to kind of compare okay so this is one with a more definite line on it um, again very different looks but very 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 pretty 
Isn't that pretty? And then again, just using um, just using the uh, flowers without the, the boots on them so you can be very versatile. I love this, this little die that we have and this one comes with the stamp. So it's just a beautiful set, uh, uh, a whole beautiful set. All right, I hope you liked our post for today. This is number three in the watercolor and then we're gonna start combining all of our um, mediums and what I mean by that is markers and pans and pencils and it's just a lot of fun. So you stick with us, you take care, have a great day and remember to subscribe and click on the, the button below. The little bell will get you a ding every time I post a new video. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button and share this with your friends. Thank you so much for stopping by today. Take care. Have a great day.